بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيمن الله سبحانه ميلوستيو ساميلوس يا دعوتي يا دعوتي لا تخضعي للقيد أو قهر العبيد ولتقدمي ولتقدمي ولتسحقي أعوان شيطان مريد يا دعوتي يا دعوتي لا تخضعي للقيد أو قهر العبيد ولتقدمي ولتقدمي ولتسحقي أعوان شيطان مريد فالنصر ميعاد الجنود فالنصر ميعاد الجنود فالنصر ميعاد الجنود فالنصر Dr. Zakir Maik and the viewers, uh, first off, I want to say that this is a, a nasiha, this is not a refutation. Uh, I saw your video originally uh, regarding masturbation and I spent one month trying to get a hold of you because I did not want to record a video, I did not want to refute. I wanted to give you nasiha, some advice about some of the academic errors, which some of them you've admitted to now, um, that were in your video. Unfortunately, I was not able to get a hold of you. I'm sure you're very busy. So I had to make that video. I personally don't get paid for any Islamic activities that I do. I don't ask for money. Alhamdulillah, I work a regular job. My YouTube channel is not monetized. We don't take money off any videos. I don't want any reference. I don't need you to promote my channel or mention my name. But my nasiha to you is the research to make sure you're presenting the authentic opinions because in the ummah who trusts you, who watches you, who follows you, take in Weak narrations thinking they're authentic. He says masturbation is better than fornication. Marriage is better than masturbation. Indirectly it means that surely masturbation is permitted, but it is makroom. Indirectly or directly, that is not what it means. What you are basing your understanding on is a weak narration. It is not authentically established. Mujahid is narrated to have said the early generation used to command their youth to practice masturbation. This is, this is why I'm saying either you should get somebody who knows these ulum to help you or you should learn jarh al-ta'deel because you're promoting things without knowing their weaknesses. Another group of scholars who say it is muba. Muba means you can do it whenever you want. There is no sin at all. You don't require a reason for it. Muba. One of them is mujahid. <laughs> Doctor, please, please. <laughs> Fear Allah. This is an amana. When you go out and make these videos, this is an amana. The four well-known madahis, all of them agree that masturbation is haram. The great scholars of this ummah from the Bab of Tafsir, like Ibn Kathir and others, they also mention these aqwal saying that it is haram. If you look at the great scholars of our generation, all of them said it's haram. There is no doubt. One of the calamities of our time is that people take their Islamic questions to those that are popular, not necessarily to those that are knowledgeable. People go based on shuhur, on popularity, not on who is afqa, who is more knowledgeable, more person of yani, uh, research and, 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 and evidences, right? And this is a very sad time because those people that, that may be very good people that are in the public eye, they're, they're, they're dua, they're caller toward Islam, they're YouTubers, they have whatever, are now having to answer questions they're really not qualified to answer. One of those situations is where uh, our beloved brother, Dr. Zakir Naik, and may Allah reward him for all the good that he has done. We are fans of him in his comparative religion, uh, yani work that he's done with the virdas and Bible number, chapter number, verse number, amazing work. But people take him fiqh questions, questions that he's really not qualified to answer. This issue of masturbation was, was brought to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ فَمَنْ اِبْتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ Now here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear 
that there is a way for you to fulfill your desires. And anything other than that, this is disobedience to Allah. Now, what about the understanding of this ayah? In the understanding of this ayah, the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha, in the Sahih hadith, in the authentic hadith, and this is again from the Mustadrak of Al Hakim. She recited these ayat and then she says, other than Az Zawja, other than the wife, or Malaka, or Yani Al Amma, other than that, you have disobeyed Allah. You, you have crossed the boundaries. And this hadith, as you can see on the, on the screen, yani this is authentic in accordance to the condition set by Imam al Bukhari and Muslim. And as you can see on your screen, Al Dhahabi, he agreed with him. And Sheikh Al Bani also agreed that this is no doubt authentic. So in a Sahih Rawaya, Aisha Taradiyanha explained this ayah and she said that other than the wife or the Amma, there, is, there should be no other way, any other way of fulfilling the sexual desires is you have crossed, crossed the boundaries of Allah. Now, our brother, uh, Dr. Zakir Naik, he presented some evidences why uh, masturbation isn't haram. For example, Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, who was the companion of the Prophet. There is a person who comes to him and says that I have been masturbating. He says that masturbation is better than fornication. Marriage is better than masturbation. Indirectly, it means that surely masturbation is permitted, but it is makhroom. Okay, indirectly or directly, that is not what it means. First off, uh, respected doctor, Again, we appreciate all the good that you do, but, but this is not your field. You're a medical doctor, stick to giving medical advice. You are an expert in the Virdas and the Bible and comparative religion, stick to that. Because if you had actually researched these narrations, and I looked them up for you, everywhere this narration of Nebbas is there, I looked up all of them for you. And I'm putting them on the screen. Here, if you had looked at this, you would have seen, as it's highlighted on the screen right there, that after mentioning this narration, Imam al bayhaqi himself says, Hada mursalun mawqufun. This is mawquf on Ibn Abbas and it's mursal. It has a broken chain. The other narration with the different sanad that's there has al ajlah. Ajlah was a Shi'i da'if narrator. So both of those going back to Ibn Abbas are weak. Those are both weak narrations. Now, you could mention that this has also been mentioned in the Musannaf Abdul Razak as it's on your screen, that's also a weak narration. Now, in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, and again I'm putting all these on the, on the screen as well, there is another sanad that also goes through Abu Yahya, as it's An Abi Yahya on the screen. He is Majhul al-Hal, he is an unknown narrator. And here you will see highlighted on your screen, where even in the Musannaf it mentions that this has a Majhul narrator. So these are weak narrations. All of those from Ibn Abbas, every single Sanad through all the different books, they all have weak narrators. So what you are basing your understanding on is a weak narration. It is not authentically established. Tayyib, what about the second group of scholars who say masturbation is permitted but comes in the makhru category is Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. He is of the opinion that masturbation should not be done but if you're going to do fornication, then you can do masturbation and he puts it in the makhru category. So the humbly school of thought, most of them, they say that masturbation comes under the makhru category. Once again, respected doctor, if you don't know about uh, an issue, uh, you really should ask those who are experts in the field. It is totally incorrect to say this is the humbly opinion. Tayyip? If you had looked up the actual books of the Hanabila, and, and I'm from somebody who has studied the Hanbali Madhab for and a good 20 years, I can tell you that if you had just picked up a very simple beginning book, for example, Manar al-Sabil, the Sharh of Al-Dalil, which is a very intro book that we all uh, learn and teach to understand the Hanbali Madhab, and it's on the screen right now, you can see the Hurma, the Tahrim of Istimna, has been clearly mentioned here, and the same ayah from Surah Al-Mu'minun, has been mentioned here as a dalil to show that the Hanbali Madhab shows it to be haram. Not makru, not mubah, haram. And this is the Hanbali opinion. You have misquoted Imam Ahmad here. 
Because as it's on your screen, a Shaykh al-Islam, Taqiyuddin ibn Taymiyyah in Majmu al-Fatawa says that Imam Ahmad's qawl is that it's haram. Imam Ahmad did not say it's makru or it's okay. No. In fact, al-Mardawi and al-Insaf, when we look at the Hanbali Madhab, one of the books you go to to know the final opinion is uh, al-Insaf. And I've put the scan on your screen there. Even here he says clearly that it is not permissible, al-Istimna, masturbation. For example, it is clearly stated in Al-Wajiz, in another book of Hanbali Fiqh, and Nas alayhi Imam Ahmad, and clearly from Imam Ahmad that it is not permissible. You will also find from Imam Ibn Qudama Al-Maqtasi, one of the great Hanabila, from the Shaykhan of the Hanabila, in Al-Kafi, he also mentions that the tahrim, yuharram, it is haram, al istimna biliyad, to masturbate. And as I mentioned, Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullah in Majmu al-Fatawa, said the same. Tayyib, now, what about the other madahib? Since you just mentioned the Hanabil, I made it clear here. But Ibn Abidin, the great scholar of the Hanafi madhab, and the screen has the quote there as well. He is the one that his hashia, the hashia Ibn Abidin is one of the final books to know what is the fatwa in the Hanafi madhab. And he also says it is haram. Maliki madhab, in the sharh of Mukhtasar al-Khalil, final verdict of the Maliki madhab also mentions it's haram. In the Shafi'i Madhab, Imam al nabawi the great scholar of Shafi'i Madhab, in his Majmu'a, he clearly says it's haram. And Imam al Shafi'i himself in Al Um mentions that it is haram. So all four of the Madahib, Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i, Hanbali, they all consider it to be haram. And this is also said by Mujahid. He says that masturbation, it should be avoided, but if it's done to prevent fornication or zina, it is permitted. In this narration, Fihi Mastur, there is a, a reporter who is unnamed. The Sanad is not authentic. This report from Mujahid is not authentic. But the other group of students of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, they said that it is mubah, permitted, without any condition. Amongst them, we have Jafar bin Said, and his opinion is that masturbation is permitted, there is no harm at all in doing, it is mubah, there is no sin, under normal circumstances permitted. This report is not from Jafar ibn Zaid, but rather Jabir ibn Zaid, and it's a da'if narration, because it's reported from a thawri from Abbad ibn Mansur. He is da'if, and there is no other rawayah that takes it to him, except through the Sanad, so this is not established, it is a weak narration. There's another Ta'bain by the name of Amr bin Dinar. According to him also, masturbation is permitted. There is no restriction. It comes under the Muba category. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. It is in the Muba category. Narration is by Ibn Juraj. Ibn Juraj, he is from the Mudallisin, as Adar Qutni had said, and he makes tadlis. He skips over narrators who are majruh, who are Criticize who are weak narrators. So this narration is also weak. To Bardavi, he says that masturbation is makru, and he also goes on to say that if you fear you will do fornication, masturbation becomes farda. I'm not sure where you got this quote from Al Mardawi from, but if you look up the actual works of Al Mardawi, uh, Al Insaf, for example, his great work. Uh, that is not what he says. What he does say is that it is not permissible, and I put the the scans on the screen. Except under extreme necessity, a darura. A darura would be a medical uh, necessity, an emergency. For example, there is a condition as you're a doctor, it's called EH, in which case you could have physical harm unless you have the semen leave the body and so on. So in those extreme cases, no doubt there is the sharia. The sharia has a wisdom. And here there is a principle in, in fiqh we call irtikab akhaf al dararain. Yani, you, you take the lesser of the two harms. But it doesn't mean one of them is permissible. I'll give you an example. Uh, if you are going to die of thirst, you can drink alcohol. That's a darura, that's a necessity, right? If you are going to starve, you can eat pork. Doesn't mean alcohol, pork are okay. It's at that time, due to the necessity, it becomes permissible. And this is a principle in Sharia that those harsh conditions make what is haram halal for that time. But that is not a general rule. That is not something you can generally put out there. 
Tayyib, and, and then you went to mention the original words from Surah Mu'minun, and you said about it. The voice of the Quran, I do agree with the second group of scholars. For example, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, may Allah be pleased with him. And the other group of scholars, Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. I believe the Ibn Abbas call that it is not haram. And this verse of Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 5 to 7, does not include masturbation. It's not prohibited. It is restricted to sexual intercourse. Now, once again, my respected doctor, you have totally misattributed a saying. You're talking about Surah Mu'minun, verses 5 to 7. And you say Ibn Abbas radiyan, thought these verses did not mean about masturbation. That is not true. Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma, did not explain these ayah to say that it does not include masturbation. Neither did Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Neither one of them said this about these ayat. You are inferring from a weak narration that has nothing to do with these ayat that Ibn Abbas radiyan, would make this assumption. Rather, in the books of tafsir like At-Tabari, Ibn Kathir and so on, if you go through them, you will find that Ibn Abbas anhuma, did not make tafsir of these ayat in this way. It is not established. Neither did Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Rather, what is authentic and established, and this is يعني, from the Sunan al-Kabir of al-Bayhaqi, that regarding these ayat al-Shafi'i, Imam al-Shafi'i, the great scholar, he said that this specifically means that masturbation is haram. And what we find from Aisha radiyanha and others is that they said that anything other than your wife and your amma, this, this, to go to any of that is haram. In fact, Ibn Kathir and others all mentioned these aqwal to show the Sahaba and the Salaf took these ayat to mean masturbation haram. No Mufassir has presented a qawl of Ibn Abbas or Imam Ahmad to show that these ayat are not in reference to masturbation. This is something you have incorrectly attributed to them. I would like to uh, end by saying that we appreciate the work of du'at. May Allah reward them for what they do. But we have great scholars of Islam who are the ones that should be giving us fatawa. For example, the mufti of this ummah at the time when he was alive, may Allah have mercy on him. The great scholar Sheikh Abdullah ibn Baz said about masturbation that it is haram. And he clearly, here is his clip. <laughs> But one of the greatest fuqaha in fiqh, يعني, from the greatest usuleen in usul al-fiqh, is Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih Uthaymeen. Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen, no introduction is needed. He was asked this question as well, and he also said masturbation is haram. Not makru, not mubah, haram. Here is the clip from him. Haram. ذلك قول قول الله عز وجل والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العادون هذا من القرآن أما من السنة فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم يا معشر الشباب من استطاع منكم الباءة فليتزوج فإنه أغض للبصر وأحسن للفرج ومن لم يستطع عليه بالصوم فإنه له وجاء وجه الدلالة من الحديث على تحريم العادة السرية التي السمنة باليد أو بوسادة أو غيره أنه لو كانت العادة هذه جائزة لأرشد إليه النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم لأنها أخف من الصوم ولأن فيها متعة فلما عدل عن عن عنها النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم الى الصوم علم انها ليست بجائزه. يعني we can't the greatest mufti, greatest fuqaha, one of the greatest scholars of hadith, الشيخ نصر الدين الباني. الشيخ الباني, no interest needed for him. الشيخ الباني was asked this question. Here he also said it's haram. حرام طبعا. الدريبة والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون. إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العادون الآية هكذا يفسرها الإمام الشافعي كنه حرام لا يجوز Now the four well-known مذاهب all of them agree 
that masturbation is haram. The great scholars of this ummah from the bab of tafsir, from the ulama of tafsir like Ibn Kathir and others, they also mention these aqwal and saying that it is haram. If you look at the great scholars of our generation, all of them said it's haram. There is no doubt to this. Now, Rasulullah is our guide. When the Sahaba came to the Prophet ﷺ in the authentic hadith and they said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, we are so in need of, of relieving ourselves, we feel like castrating ourselves. We are that desperate at that time. What should we do? He didn't tell them, you know what, masturbate. No. He told them, fast. And this is not like saying, well, if he says fast, it doesn't mean you can't. No, this is the Nabi. He has to show the Ummah solutions. And if there was another solution, he would have showed it to them. النصر ميعاد الجنود والموت لبراس الخلود وعلى البلاء وعلى الألام فأين زمجرة الأسد واستحكم الطعم الفساد ونحن في ذل العبيد وعلى البلاء وعلى الألام فأين زمجرة الأسد واستحكم الطعم الفساد ونحن في ذل العبيد يا دعوتي يا دعوتي لا تخضعي للقيد أو قهر العبيد والتقدمي والتقدمي والتسحق أعوان شيطان مريد يا دعوتي يا دعوتي You mentioned a revival of Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما that was weak. More than a million people heard you and assumed it was authentic because you relied upon it. When now you said Then he said that the reference that Dr. Saqir and I gave of Ibn Abbas and took out a book and he quoted Ibn Hazm and he said Ibn Hazm says that this is Daif and I checked up and this brother is right. I would like to thank him for correcting me. Thank you for accepting the fact that the narration you mentioned was weak and uh, I'm your brother in Islam, it's just a nasiha. Alhamdulillah, uh, and I'm glad we got that clarified. Unfortunate thing is, in your response, you put words in my mouth. And I really wish you hadn't because I respect you. Um, I did not mention Ibn Hazm anywhere in my video. I'm putting the link to my original video in its original format here. And anybody can watch it. I would really appreciate if you would watch I know you watched it already, but apparently you didn't pay attention to it because you said I quoted Ibn Hazm. I did not quote Ibn Hazm. I never mentioned Ibn Hazm's grading of it. I never mentioned a part of Ibn Hazm's quoting. I gave you the actual hadith with the chains and then I gave you the weaknesses. So I appreciate you admitting that what you quoted was weak. But why did I not say it is Daif because the same Ibn Abbas was quoted by Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah. When he says that Ibn Abbas believed that it is permitted when necessity, he did not say it is Daif. So when Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah quotes Ibn Abbas without saying it is Daif, I take it for granted it's authentic. That's the reason I quoted. Dear doctor, you said in the beginning of your second year that you have a team that you hire in India and there's people with masters and PhD. Then whoever is preparing those notes for you is not doing their job because Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah says Kalam Ibn Abbas. He doesn't say Sahan Ibn Abbas. He didn't say it's authentic from Ibn Abbas. He just said the what has been attributed. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah in Majmu' al-Fatawa, his style of writing is he gives all the references, he gives all. But unless he says this is authentic, it does do not assume that it's authentic. And here, that assumption led to you making a video that millions of people saw, and they assumed something is authentic because you quoted it, when now you have admitted and you know was weak. So when the student of knowledge, I don't even remember his name. My, uh, my name is Uthman ibn Farooq. You watched my video, so <laughs> you should have known my name, but my name is Uthman ibn Farooq. He was right. I thank him. So inshallah in future, I will not say that Ibn Abbas said that marriage is better than masturbation, masturbation is better than fornication. I am not saying because Ibn Hazm says it is life, I agree with it. 
Well, again, I did not mention Ibn Hazm. Uh, I, again, uh, why? <laughs> I really don't know what to say, doctor. I'm really disappointed, uh, to be very honest with you. I love you for the sake of Allah. I've, I've always admired your da'wah work, but uh, please re-watch my video. I do appreciate that you have admitted that this is weak, and I hope that now you will take down the original video because you don't want to be promoting weak narration. But what was shocking to me, this brother who quoted Ibn Hazm, he put a full stop and there was no full stop. Why didn't he continue? That's pretty shocking to me as well because I didn't quote Ibn Hazm. <laughs> Doctor, please, please, fear Allah, you're accusing me of something that you can watch the video again, I didn't do. I did not quote Ibn Hazm, I didn't put a full stop when there's no full stop, I didn't give you a part, I showed you the actual chains. Please, you, this is an amana. When you go out and make these videos, this is an amana. But please, don't quote half. I did not quote Ibn Hazm. I did not quote part of Ibn Hazm. I did not mention Ibn Hazm in my entire video. I'm giving some more quotations with references of Tabain, Tabe Tabain and scholars who said it is makruh permitted. Amir bin Dinar is narrated to have said, I do not see any problem in masturbation in Abdul Razak and in Musannaf Hadith 13594. If you look up the Hadith, I had already mentioned it in my first video and why it's weak. If you had just paid attention to the first video, I had already mentioned uh, Ibn Juraj and you, you mentioned him without knowing his hal. This is, this is why I'm saying Either you should get somebody who knows these ulum to help you or you should learn Jarh al-Ta'deel because you're promoting things without knowing their weaknesses. It's mentioned in Abdul Razak in Musannaf in Hadith 13586 that Ibn Juraj quoted Atta that he considered masturbation as makruh. So Imam Ahmad, and I put the quote here, he says that when Ibn Juraj says Qala or An from Ata, he has not heard that hadith from Ata. So this narration from Ata is weak because there's a break between Ibn Juraj and Ata. It further mentioned in Abdul Razak in Musannaf, Hadith 13593, that Mujahid is narrated to have said, the early generations used to command their youth to practice masturbation. Uh, and I repeat that this narration is weak, and I had said that in my first video already, so I don't understand why you're repeating those same weak narrations that I already addressed and showed you the weakness, not just from the call of some later alim, I could have brought Sheikh Albani's call, or I brought you the original works of hadith and the chains and where the weakness is. I, I wanna play for you uh, uh, your original clip and then your second clip to show the academic error that I was pointing out. The second group of scholars who say masturbation is permitted but comes in the makhruh category is Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. So the Hanbali school of thought, most of them, they say that masturbation comes under the makhruh category. So you see the error there. First, you said Imam Ahmad holds this view when you yourself read from Ibn Taymiyyah that that is not the well-known view of Imam Ahmad, that is a, a, a rare view. The well-known view, what is authentic from Ahmad, that he considered it haram. Second, you said this is the opinion of the Hanbali Madhab, which is not, as you will refute yourself from your second video in a minute. And this is a, a very minute amount of Hanbali scholars that took this view. The majority, the Jamhur of the Hanabila and the Mu'tamid, the established position of the Madhab is it is haram. Here is yourself, refuting yourself from your second video. In his Muqtasar Al-Fatwa Al-Misriya, the Egyptian Fatwa, page number 34. Masturbation is haram in the sight of majority of the scholars and it is most prevalent views narrated about Ahmad. So, so you see the difference, right? This is the mistake. In the first video, you said Imam Ahmad's view is that it's makro. But in your own reading now, you're reading from Netanya that that's not true. These group of scholars emphatically mention it is makro. One of them is Atta. The narration of Atta is not authentic. I've explained this in the first video. I explained it 
in this video Jabir bin Zaid student of Ibn Abbas he said it in Makhruh Jabir bin Zaid which in your original video you said Ja'far ibn Zaid in my first video my dear doctor I clarified this hadith is da'if as well uh, I know you watched it but apparently you didn't pay attention to it uh, because you're repeating those same narrations there's another group of scholars who say it is muba muba means you can do it whenever you want there is no sin at all you don't require a reason for it muba one of them is Mujahid. This is also Da'if. I have already pointed that out. Hadith number 13,593 from Musannaf Abdul Razak. Amir ibn Dinar, it is Mubah. Then you repeated Amir ibn Dinar, which is actually Amr ibn Dinar. And I've already pointed out the weakness of this twice. These are all weak narrations and you're still promoting them. Al-Hasan al-Basri, Mubah. Again, Hassan al-Basri, the narration is weak. These are weak narrations. If you had just reached out, or not just to me, somebody could have helped you look up these narrations, then we wouldn't be spreading weak narrations to the Ummah. I'm going to end with just a few points. One, that I love you for the sake of Allah, and I hope that you will reach out to me or give me a way to reach out to you so we can talk and not have to go back and forth. I hope that you will take down those videos with those weak narrations and maybe put up another video that will show the authentic narrations. I am here to help you with that. What I presented was that the four well-known madhahib, the Mu'tamid relied upon view of all four of these madhahib is the masturbation is haram. But you had misattributed to the Hanabila in your first video that their opinion as a madhab, the most of them and from Imam Ahmad was that it's makru, which is incorrect and I've given the references. Past that, my nasiha to you was not to use weak narrations. No doubt you have the right to any opinion you like. I have never said you can't hold a view. But my nasiha to you is the research to make sure you're presenting the authentic opinions. And when you mention an opinion and it's weak, don't represent that without showing its weakness. Because in the ummah who trusts you, who watches you, who follows you, take in weak narrations thinking they're authentic. I'm willing to help. I can refer you to Farid Responds or other brothers who can help you with this. You don't even have to mention us. No plug is needed, no money. Just so you present the authentic information to the Ummah. And after that, you can hold any view you like. As long as it's within the Ahl Sunnah, no doubt that your view, that it's makru, is within the Ahl Sunnah. But your references were incorrect. And even in your second video are incorrect. At least present the picture correctly to the Ummah. And we will hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah guides us all towards the Haqq. Wa jazakumullahu khairan.